Here we're gonna look at a nice problem from the 2019 Portuguese Math Olympiad. So here's the setup. We've got a square with side length 10, and then at every midpoint of each side, so we've got a midpoint here, so in other words, that's five units and that's five units. We've got a midpoint here, so that's five units and that, that's five units, and so on and so forth. So at every midpoint along the sides, we're going to make a line segment to the opposite corner. So here we've got a line segment from this midpoint to this vertex and to this vertex. So we're gonna do that from all of the midpoints to all of the vertices, creating this like star shape. And then the goal is to find the shaded area. So I've shaded it in blue here. So I'm gonna give just one quick hint because with the hint, the problem goes pretty quickly, and that is to find the area of the non-shaded parts instead of the shaded parts, and then use the fact that we know that the area of the whole object is 100, and then we can use subtraction here. So that's maybe the first part of my hint. The second part of my hint is that by the symmetry built into this figure, we know that the area of all of these triangles is equal. So the area of this triangle is equal to the area of this triangle and so on and so forth. We've got eight total triangles. So if I find the area of one of these triangles, then I'm essentially good to go. Okay, so maybe try the problem with that, those hints. And then what I'm gonna do is draw this picture again, focusing on just one of these triangles because that's all we need for our setup. So now we're ready to get into our solution. So what I've done is I've redrawn my picture, but just focusing on this triangle, which I have now shaded purple. So the area of this shaded purple triangle is equal to the area of all other of the seven unshaded triangles. And we can find the area of the shaded purple triangle and we're good by our previous discussion. So here I've kept this line segment right here and this line segment right here and I've shaded the same purple triangle. So I should say now our goal is to find area of this shaded purple triangle. And if we've got that, then we're good to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and give some things some names so that we can make a geometric argument. So let's name this vertex A maybe, and then let's name this one B and this one C. And then we'll name this one up here P, this one down here Q, and this one right here R. Great, and then the next thing that I wanna do is label a few angles. So I wanna label this angle, maybe we'll say it has measure beta, and then this angle right here, we'll say that that has measure alpha. Okay, great. So the next thing that I wanna notice is that triangle A, B, P, and triangle A, R, Q are congruent. And we can see that by well, a bunch of different ways, but maybe side angle side would be the easiest way. So notice they have one side length, um, length 10, and then they each have a right angle, and then they've got a side length of length five. So let's maybe go ahead and write that down. So by SAS, we have triangle ABP is congruent to triangle ARQ. But that means, well, obviously all the sides are of the same length and all of the angles are of the same measure. And I should say the corresponding angles. But what that tells us is that this angle measure alpha is equal to the angle measure beta. Because this angle that I've written alpha, which is angle A, B, P, corresponds to the angle A, R, Q in the other triangle. So we've got alpha equals beta here. Now the next thing that I wanna look at is triangle ARQ versus triangle ABC. So notice they both share this angle right here, AB or BAC I should say, which means they share one angle measure, then they sh share another angle measure because alpha is equal to beta, but what that tells us is that they must also share the third angle measure by the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180. 
So that means each of these is a right angle. Well, we already knew that this one over here was a right angle because we have a square, but that implies that this one over here is also a right angle, which is gonna be pretty helpful for our calculation. So let's maybe go ahead and write that down. So by angle, 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 we have triangle A, B, C, and maybe I'll underline that in purple because that's like our goal triangle is similar to triangle A, R, Q. Great. But now that means we've got the proportionality rules of similar triangles and we can use those to calculate the base which would be AC and the height, which would be BC of our goal triangle, then use the area formula to get the area. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So by similar triangles, we know that AB over AR, so the proportion of those side lengths has to be equal to BC over RQ but we know a bunch of those lengths already. So notice that we know that AB is equal to five, so that gives us five up here. We know that AR, well, we don't know what that is yet, but we can use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate it pretty easily. So notice we've got the square root of so 10 squared because of this length right here, and then five squared, so that's gonna be the square root of 125. So again, that's the length of AR by the Pythagorean theorem using this length of 10 and this length of five. And then BC, well, that's our goal. So we have BC over RQ, but we know that RQ is equal to five. Great. Now, the next thing that we might wanna do is rewrite 125 as 25 times five so that we can factor the 25 out of the square root and maybe cancel it with this five in the numerator. So we factored the 25 out of the square root and it became a five. So let's see where that leaves us. Now we can multiply this five up here and we have five over the square root of five equals B, C. But now notice five is the square root of five squared. So that tells us that we can write B, C as just the square root of five. Great, so let's maybe go ahead and put that length in here. We have this length right here is the square root of five. Now let's go ahead and calculate AC, but we can calculate AC using the Pythagorean theorem. So notice the length of AC will be the length of uh, AB squared minus the length of BC squared, and then we have to take the square root because here our hypotenuse is AB. So let's maybe go ahead and write that down. So AC will be equal to the square root of the length of AB squared minus the length of BC squared. But we have both of those values already. So notice that's gonna be the square root of 25 minus five or the square root of 20. We can write 20 as four times five, factor the four out of the square root and that's gonna become two times the square root of five. Great. Now we know that area of this purple triangle is gonna be one half base times height. So our base will be square root of five and then our height will be two times the square root of five. So let's maybe put that in here too. Or vice versa, just depending on what name you wanna to give to the base and the height. So we've got the, the area of this triangle is one half, two times the square root of five times the square root of five. So that means we have an area of five for this purple triangle. So let's maybe put that in here. We've got an area of five for that. So now we're ready for our goal. So the area of this blue shaded star, so maybe I'll draw that as a blue star over here. I know it doesn't have the same number of points, but I think that's kind of good enough. The area of this blue shaded star is going to be the area of the entire square. That's gonna be 100 or 10 squared minus eight times the area of this purple triangle, again by our discussion that all of these areas are the same because there's a bunch of symmetry built in here. So 
So it's gonna be minus eight times five. So that's 100 minus 40 or 60. So we found the area of our goal region, and that's a good place to stop.